Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. And welcome to our live coverage here. Day three of Dell Technologies World 2018. We are live in Las Vegas. Hope you've been with us for the first two days. We have a great lineup here for you on day three. I'm John Walls, along with Stu Miniman. Uh, glad to have you along, Stu. It's always great to work with you. Thanks, uh, John. Same from you. From you. Good, good, uh, good week so far for you? It's, it's been excellent. My voice is holding up. It's been a long <laughs> week. Uh, but You're yeah, a busy man. So excited to, uh, you know, y you get are, all of this, and uh, yeah, heck, I'll, I'll be seeing Dan again next week and yeah, the show. So. And Dan McConnell's becoming like, he's like a, not even an annual visitor, you're like a bi-monthly visitor yeah, here on the theCUBE, right? Uh, VP yeah, of Converge yeah, Platforms. Fifth time you get a free, free sandwich. Yeah, so. that's right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I got a punch card, I got a, got a sign and get a punch each time. Yeah, nice to have you, Dan. Nice Thank to have you, you back, good Happy to see you again. All right, let's just talk about the show. Uh, first off, you know, here we are, day three. Um, we talked a little bit yesterday about customer discussions and conversations, yep. so and now you've had a little bit of time to soak this in and, and what you've heard from folks, and, and what would be your takeaway here? Sure, I, I, I may spin this one a little bit. No, I may have an That's angle right. here. Tremendous interest in HCI, um, and I'm not saying that just because I'm, That's your I'm in world, HCI. That's right. Yeah. Um, no, but it, it's a lot of, lot of good, solid feedback from customers. It's, it's, starting to shift um, uh, more into mainstream, right? So as we, as we see uh, customers deploy it, uh, more workloads get deployed on top of it, um, there's, a, there's a tremendous amount of interest in HCI. When we look at uh, you know, all the graphs of, of customer interviews we're doing and analyst discussions we're doing, HCI is right there at the top of the list mm -hmm. um, in terms of subjects that we're talking about. So, I mean, can um, you quantify that? I mean, is our numbers at all out there floating around in terms of growth? In terms of what, what? Oh, oh, from the HCI side, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, uh, pick your, you know, most analysts will agree it's about 70 to 80% growth year over year. Um, and and uh, uh, I'd say from a, from a Dell perspective, we're doing, we're doing 138 percent, so we're actually growing faster than market. Um, a lot of that's due to, we've got a, one, we've been in the HCI business for a while, two, uh, we take a portfolio approach, right? Uh, there's, there's never any one size fits all, so we, we, uh, we actually take a portfolio approach to HCI. Um, we've got uh, what are multiple different consumption models, one that is an appliance, this is, the server, the hardware, the software, uh, life cycle managed in, in, in an appliance. And then the next layer is what we call rack scale. Obviously HCI uh, puts some pressure on the network, right? High, high network dependency. Rack scale, what, what, what rack scale does is include the networking components in that engineered system attribute. So, um, uh, you know, pre-tested, pre-designed um, uh, inclusion of both the physical as well as the virtual network. Um, and uh, across both of those consumption models, we have uh, a, a stack that is very VMware-centric, mm -hmm. right? VxRail, VxRack, SDDC, and we have a stack that is uh, what we call Open HCI, supports multiple hypervisors. That is XC series on the appliance and VxRack Flex mm -hmm. on the rack scale solution. So. Um, portfolio approach, cover the whole market, um, and, and we're really seeing it, it, it blow up, it's yeah, great. Dan, it's interesting, I think back to when people were still first trying to wrap their their brains around this whole HCI thing, it was like, oh, okay, I took like, you know, server and storage, kind of smashed it together, uh, some software maybe in there, but it was, oh, this is, you know, small end thing, it's, you know, maybe four nodes, maybe getting to eight nodes, uh, but you, you talked about the, the, the VxRack Flex, yep. uh, which we've been watching Scale.io since before the acquisition, uh, and, and all that solutions, you know, much larger configuration. Yeah. Some people said, oh, it's wait, it's not even HCI, because uh, I've talked to some customers, well, I can do a storage only configuration, or I can do uh, a full hyper-converged configuration. We've seen maturation and some segmentation in the marketplace, Absolutely. so you know, bring us inside that from you know, the flex business sure. as to what you're seeing, what, what differentiates it from some of the other options. Absolutely, I'd, I'd say it's, it's flexible. <laughs> um, so, uh, and, and uh, <laughs> dog barking next door. Dog, dog, um, on cue. On cue, yeah. nice. There um, he is again. 
So uh, it's, there's anyway. actually if there's, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a one of the philanthropic uh, Dell uh, outreach programs. It's you know uh, comfort pets or yes. you know therapy yeah. dogs. So, yes. Therapy dogs. Thank yes. you. And so they're just, well, right next door. No reflection at all on the guests they're or the all, program or whatever. So. Uh, they're in day three too. <laughs> it's, it's been a long conference. We're, we're, we're getting punchy. All right, back to okay. flex. Right, back to, <laughs> back to flex. Just explain it. Yeah. So uh, uh, you know, back to your point. Flex is flexible. We've got customers from uh, you know four nodes all the way up to over you know large enterprise customers over a thousand nodes. Um, it is you know matter of fact, I, about 45 percent of our business comes from Fortune 500. So when you think HCI, you know, like you said, HCI started in what was you know VDI, right? We're gonna we're gonna pick a workload. VDI is very scale you know kind of linearly scalable. HCI was a good fit. Nowadays, it's it's multiple workloads, right? That that flexibility, agility, ease of scale. People are putting more and more workloads on top of it. Uh, the the uh, VX Rack Flex, we've got you know uh, when you talk about scalable, up to up to a thousand nodes, literally 30 million IOPS, right? So uh, performance, I think we got it covered. Um, <laughs> so it is it's uh, definitely maturing. Um, some of those larger customers are running, you know. Anywhere from 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 database all the way to you know, mission critical applications. Yeah, uh, Dan, I actually did a case study of uh, one of your larger global financial companies a few years ago. Uh, want you to talk about what they saw this solution at? This was a foundation for their oh, private absolutely. cloud. Uh, you know, they use in certain regions. Public cloud makes sense, but in a lot of areas, it, it, this is the foundational layer of private cloud. A lot of times people, oh, HCI is just, you know, it is what it is, it's some boxes and some software, but, you know, talk about the private cloud angle. It's, and this customer, you know, it, it, it's actually a very interesting storyline. They, they started off doing uh, what we would call do it yourself, build, it your, you know, build your own, um, and love the technology, uh, as is predominant with HCI, continued to scale, right? Um, so bought a lot, added on, added on, um, and, and as they as they continue to, to add, um, continued having discussions with them, and, and they actually, you know, love the technology, would love to be able to automate more, would, would love to spend less time setting it up as it comes in. Mm -hmm. um, so they actually moved up that consumption pyramid into VxRack Flex. Um, which, which comes, as opposed to do it yourself, comes, you know, shrink wraps, roll it in. Um, so they, they actually designed uh, their, their infrastructure, their data center around what they call pods, right? So, um, you know, fairly large pods, but um, it, they've, they've changed, the, changed the consumption units uh, on, on how they consume IT. They, they'll actually reel, wheel in flex pods and uh, uh, that's their new unit of consumption. And now a flex pod is is it, not to be confused large. with another product called FlexPod. Oh gosh, yes, <laughs> VX Rack Flex Pods. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we, we, we unfortunately <laughs> have run out of words yes, right. uh, in, in our industry here. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Oh, we can. You can. Yeah, I'm sure you'll you'll find something in the vernacular that will that will apply yes, here. Yes. Yes. I'll try and burn that one from my memory. Right. But good catch. So, so, but, so what? So that's one one use case. I mean, just in general. Now, I mean, so what is the value prop for a customer? You know, today, when they, when they as as opposed to what kind of flexibility you're giving them. You talk sure. about performance, but how are people actually putting it to use for them, and what are they doing better? Do you think because of that? Sure. I, and um, I'll start off one with which is uh, a, a, an architectural discussion, and I'll 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 crunch this down pretty small. Um, in the beginning, there was there was DAS, direct attach storage, and it was fast and and it was easy to manage as long as you had to manage one. And you get you know a hundred units, and it was siloed storage, and it was hard. So you know the world came up with SAN. It's consolidated storage. It's great. I can carve it up. Um, I can manage it from one place. And then we came up with Flash SSD, blindingly fast. Um, and that, that storage controller started to be a choking point. So we moved the storage back into the server, a la HCI. Or actually, we called it server sand for it's that specific sand. reason. Exactly yes. right, exactly right. So um, initial ventures into some, uh, some HCI, uh, you can only scale uh, the, the storage or only scale the HCI clusters as big as one given cluster. So you started building somewhat of silos of HCI. Um, one of the one of the beauties of Flex and, and of VX Flex OS storage software 
um, it, is it can scale across multiple clusters. Mm -hmm. Those clusters can be VMware, they can be bare metal, they can be Linux, right? Um, so you start to gain all the advantages of HCI. Flexibility, agility, kind of incremental scaling, pay as you grow, um, uh, with all of the advantages of storage consolidation. I can, I, I, I no longer have pools of siloed storage, I can carve up ones as needed, when needed, um, I can manage it all as, as one combined storage pool. So, um, from a from a, a flex perspective, um, it, it it's got some pretty pretty nice architectural attributes, which give you the best of HCI and agility and, and scale, as well as storage consolidation. So we're seeing a lot of success there. Yeah, Dan, I, I hear things like uh, open, flexible, uh, some of those environments, and, and I think about the service providers and requirements that they have for how they need to simplify their environments. Super conscious on cost. Uh, how's this been doing in the service provider market recently? Uh, absolutely, we, uh, funny you bring that up. We actually talk internally, we've got a, a service provider team um, inside Dell, they, they focus on servicing the large telcos and other service providers. Um, and uh, we're, we're, uh, we've, we've noticed that their underlying infrastructure is very, very similar with Flex. Um, so we're in discussions to, to see how we land what they do on top of, of, of what we do as a standardized offering. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, even right now, a lot of our customers are in the service provider space. That uh, large growth, flexibility, and some of the, the, the underlying storage stack has multi-tenancy capabilities where you can carve up and isolate that lend itself very, very well to, to service providers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, to, to Dan, Please. just uh, there for people that know Scale.io, anything new that they should be understanding? Understand it really went to, it, it, it's this Absolutely. packaging as like a hardware model. Organizationally, uh, it, it lives under uh, the, the server team now, I, I believe it is. Or, uh, yeah, so yeah, I, so. Uh, absolutely. So Two things there, one, um, uh, organizationally, all the HCI stuff came in up under Ashley, Ashley Garak Kawala, so it came in up under the server side. Um, and then, uh, so, uh, Scale.io uh, is up under Jeff Boudreau, uh, under, under Dan Inbar. It's storage stack, it's in, it's in under the, the, the storage division. We work very, very closely together. Um, and so, the second thing that's, that, that's happening, um, there's a, as we one, we've been in the HCI world for a while, in the in the, in the, the CI world for a while. Um, we, we've we've quickly determined we can drive much better customer experience, much better customer outcomes as we lean more towards an appliance or an engineered system versus a, a do-it-yourself kind of model. Um, so at, with with uh, Scale I/O, what we're trying to do is is push it more into an appliance model, push it more into rack scale model. BX Rack Flex. Um, so the the there's a there's a uh, outbound shift um, away from kind of uh, what, what was Scale I/O as a, as a software only um, and and into more of a an engineered system appliance offering. So um, with that shift, you'll see a rebrand um, from Scale I/O to VX Flex OS. Uh, it's a just a, a rebrand of the software. So I'm glad Stu, you know, we talked about organization. I mean, because you know you had. Um, kind of reorg, you know, not too long ago, and so we had Ashley on yesterday, we talked to Jeff yesterday as well. So I mean, just from, from your perspective, I mean, how, now that you've had a few months, right, to settle in, and find your groove, um, how much of a difference you think as far as customer facing is this making, or in I, terms of responding sure. to those kinds of needs and those desires? Sure, Stick, you know, sticking HCI with the server team has an awful lot of synergy, right? Um, I, obvious. Uh, compute centric uh, scale from a from a business scale perspective. So there's a there's an awful lot of goodness in uh, living in that same organization. Uh, Ashley's done it pretty well to make sure we, we there's there's a lot of alignment, um, but we're also keeping a lot of the engineered system special sauce uh, uh, focus on the on on the on the HCI side. So um, we're able to one better leverage a lot of the what I would call supply chain scale, right? Um, the the uh, processes and go-to-market capabilities of an engine that is built around hundreds and thousands of units, right? Um, that, that stretches across services, that stretches across factory and supply chain. Um, 
obviously, we want to drive HCI. We want to drive HCI into mainstream and scale. Sitting right there um, in the in the server organization, they do scale, right? So uh, a lot of good learnings, a lot of good synergy and leverage across teams. Well, it's coming together. It is, yeah. absolutely. Nicely done. Thanks for joining us again. Good to see you. you guys. You're going to see each other next week, I said? That's right. You'll be down in New Orleans, is that, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, enjoy and stay out of trouble, both of you. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> and, you know, one week Vegas, Vegas. one week, New Orleans and X, that's a recipe for uh, uh, interesting times. Yes, that, that, that it is. Dan McConnell, thanks for being with us here on theCUBE. Thank the you, Cube. thanks for having me. Back with more from Las Vegas, right after this, you're watching theCUBE from Dell Technologies World 2018.